information that I received from the FBI uh, because my work had resulted in the White House daily brief being handed to then President Obama. So Obama knew what was going on, did nothing. Joining us now with his exclusive interview, The Hill's John Solomon. Now we're going to have parts two, three, and four in the days to come. Let me, let me start with this comment about Obama knew. Because yeah. this guy was in Putin's, he had Putin had operatives in America. We know That's they right. were bribing, they were involved in extortion, money laundering, kickbacks, and racketeering. We know that Putin wanted these operatives to get a foothold in the uranium industry. We import 90% of our uranium. It's not like we want to give it to Russia. And he's there 18 months before we approved the Uranium One deal. It never made sense, John. It doesn't. And, you know, if you remember a year ago when I first came on, uh, Sean, with Sarah, and we were starting to talk about this, we talked about maybe the whole Donald Trump thing was a breadcrumb trail to take us away from a different story. This may be the different story that the intelligence community was trying to take us our eye off the ball on. Here is what we know. If you were an American company and you engaged in bribery and kickbacks, you would be what's called debarred. You'd be prevented from doing business from the United States government. You'd be punished. It happens all the time. We see announcements every week about this. If if you're Vladimir Putin's uranium company and you're involved in kickbacks and you're involved in bribery and you're involved in extortion and you're involved in money laundering, but you give $500,000 to Bill Clinton and you give several million dollars to a lobbying firm that's doing work for the Bill Clinton, you know what happens to you? You get billions of new dollars in contracts from the United States government. You get Why? taken off the export control list and you get a large swath of America's uranium supply. That is the story that Doug Campbell puts before the American public. Robert Mueller was the FBI director. He knew he in was. 2009 that Putin's operatives were doing all this. Wasn't Campbell informing him every step of the way? He was, absolutely. He was the director, and we were told by both law enforcement sources and Mr. Campbell that the senior leadership of the FBI, including Director Mueller, was directly aware of his revelations. We were also told by Mr. Campbell and several intelligence officials that Mr. Campbell's information made it all the way into the president's daily briefing. It got to President PDF. Obama's desk. Uh, the PDB. Yeah, the PDB, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's go to this issue. We didn't know that the FBI field office in Arkansas was conducting an investigation in the Clinton Foundation because as you follow the money, a lot of people that were involved from Canada and elsewhere that were part of this deal that all wanted America, America that imports 90% of its uranium or thereabouts, we have a shortage of it. We didn't want it in the hands of a foreign actor, Russia of all places, the, the hostile regime it is, and Putin a hostile actor that he is, and in fact, as, as it was first reported by Peter Schweitzer, about $145 million over time kicked back before and after the Clinton Foundation. Yeah, there was a lot of money that flowed. Remember, Bill Clinton got a $500,000 contribution. We reported that the Russians told Doug Campbell, and he confirmed this in the interview, that they routed $3 million to an American lobbying company with the intention that the money would go to support and provide free services to uh, Bill Clinton's charitable initiative called the Clinton Global Initiative. Now, it isn't just that the Russians said it, we found the money. We actually found an announcement by the Clinton Global Initiative and by the lobbying firm admitting that they were increasing their giving for this. So there is a path of money that goes from Russia into the Clinton's backyard. And yet uh, we're talking about a lot of other things today and not this. Unbelievable. All right, you spent a lot of time with him. He's had this information. But for the longest time, the government kept him under wraps because yeah. they had a, you know, all this talk about non-disclosure agreements in terms of whatever happens. But the government doesn't usually do that, but they did have a gag order on him. And how did it get lifted? Yep. Uh, his attorney, Victoria Tensing, uh, went to the Justice Department and negotiated a, a deal to let him talk to Congress. And then because he's talked to Congress and his story's gotten out, we've been able to interview him. And I'll tell you something that's really important. I have a large portion of the FBI's counterintelligence file that actually shows what Doug Campbell did. His story and those facts do not match what Rod Rosenstein's prosecutors told Congress just a few months ago. They're not, they still don't have his story right. The facts are in these files. Congress could have access to them. Somebody should take a look because we're talking about being tough on Russia. Seven years ago, we gave the boat away on uranium, and we did it while knowing that the Russians were engaged in criminal activity on our soil, compromising our national security. That's what Doug Campbell's story is all about. So we know that about Russia, and we also know Hillary paid for a phony, for a phony dossier with Russian sources by a foreign national. It seems like with no Russia collusion, that I, evidence that I've seen, maybe you've seen some, I haven't, 
it seems like all fingers point back to the left and to Democrats over this. You know, you hear Democrats in the last few weeks saying President uh, Trump hasn't been tough enough on Russia. We got to get tougher. They're bad actors. They've done things. But on their watch with their president, President Obama, with Secretary Clinton, we gave away some of the biggest, most valuable decisions in the uranium industry ever given to Russia. From the Cold War on, we had these restrictions. Barack Obama relifted them. George Bush suspended a thing called the Nuclear Cooperation Agreement. Barack Obama restored it. We uh, allowed Russia for the first time to compete for uh, uranium fuel contracts, and they got billions upon billions of dollars and we let them have these uranium assets called uranium one and we did it all great. knowing that they were engaged in criminality great work john solomon we'll have you thank back you. we have more of john's exclusive interview we'll be airing thank you sir when we come back one of the most disturbing videos you